Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello, my name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this nifty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. And can I leave this book with you for you? Well, <laughs> well hello, excuse me, uh, frog in my voice there. Um, welcome to our show today, uh, Voices from the Dust. I'm Doug Bundy. I uh, used to be a missionary out there long ago, but now I'm an old man trying to cope with technology every morning, which always provides me with a new challenge. I uh, just got ready to uh, start the program right on time, and then suddenly everything just went bonkers and nothing would work. But uh, hopefully we've learned to try to think on our feet here and cope with the problems that we have in the video and the audio. And we're not the only program that has these problems, <laughs> that's for sure. I watch a lot of programs and I see that they all have technical challenges and some of them aren't their whole crews of people. Uh, but uh, I'm here all alone trying to cope with it. So uh, it's not too surprising that we uh, have a little setback once in a while. But we welcome you to our show where we share the reason for the hope within us, the reason why the Latter-day Saints are Christians, and of course the reason why you should be too. Our message not only explains what distinguishes LDS Christian doctrine from non-LDS Christian doctrine, but also why we declare that the calamity is coming and the only salvation remaining for the Gentiles is for them to get on board, to repent and to be baptized and thus to be identified. It's the only way to be identified in the same covenant and to worship at the same altar as Israel. We've discussed this in past episodes of Voices from the Dust Radio and TV. And you can ask, access those on our website, voicesfromthedust.org. Voicesfromthedust.org. Just go there and click on the menu item marked TV. And you can watch the program in a live player there during the broadcast time. Or it's recorded at right after. And uh, so you can watch it any time of the day. And then uh, to the next day. Uh, when we start again a live program in the morning. Uh, but you can also access these on our YouTube channel, our Google Plus play page, and our Facebook page, which are all entitled Voices from the Dust. And uh, there are links provided above the player for you to access that. There are links below the player for um, accessing our past episodes by month. So anyway, we're grateful to have everybody here. Yesterday was a historic three-hour program <laughs> where we played a lot of videos, and uh, we never gone three hours before. We actually went three hours and fifteen minutes, though I think yesterday. And uh, but it was important to understand. Yesterday was our uh, land of Zion program today is our enemies of zion tomorrow will be the prophets of zion and so on monday is the uh, program for the controversies of zion and tuesday is the program for the truths of zion but all of these kind of meld together i tried to to use these different themes for each day of the week that we broadcast to uh, help me kind of uh, think of things that uh, uh, that I can uh, present on the program. But uh, it turns out that uh, it doesn't always help, and they sort of meld together. And uh, so uh, that is uh, uh, 
uh, sometimes makes it more difficult. But today, the enemies of Zion, we're talking about the Lord's uh, use of the term in the fire of his jealousy. He speaks against the New World Order and Edumea. And he, uh, in the Old Testament, and it looks like he's talking about just the Holy Land, but given the Book of Mormon, the voices from the dust, we know that there is more than just the Holy Land there, that it's about this land which has been consecrated for the gathering of his people. And, uh, and uh, when he forgives them of their sins, when he cleanses them and he will gather them and it will be a dramatic thing. So here on this show, we're trying to understand that course we don't understand it as well as the prophets of old but we're taking their words and we're asking the lord to enlighten our minds and uh we take the voices from the dust to try to understand that now uh before we get to uh talking about uh how he has in the fire of his jealousy spoken against the new world order and uh and edumea uh we will uh go through our chapter 50. We've reached chapter 50 of the Book of Alma as we proceed through the Book of Mormon. The voices of the dust say, or the Lord says about the voices of the dust, people that were brought down to destruction, that they would whisper out of the ground. When It's actually the righteous who are whispering out of the ground to us in our day over the span of five centuries actually more than five centuries more more like 10 centuries 10 centuries no well um they went down their whole civilization went down in, in 400 and something 425 a.d and here we are at 2014 a.d so uh 15 centuries in we're talking about even more so Anyway, uh, it's a really interesting. And then we'll get into our situation update today and uh, so that we can see that. But we'll explain what that means before we get there. So let me bring up, I thought we would have some guests here. I hope to have them here by the time we get to this point so that uh, we can have a, a, a rather... Uh, orderly show without having to break in uh, in an ad hoc manner but anyway uh here is alma chapter 50 and i'll share the text with you here um it uh is uh online uh, the book of mormon is online and also there is a reading by a professional reader that uh, reads it if you would like and that's what we want here so we're going to go ahead then and play that and we'll talk about it on the other side Oops. hello sorry and now it came to pass that moroni did not stop making preparations for war or to defend his people against the lamanites for he caused that his army should commence in the commencement of the 20th year of the reign of the judges that they should commence in digging up heaps of earth round about all the cities throughout all the land which was possessed by the Nephites. And upon the top of these ridges of earth he caused that there should be timbers, yea, works of timbers built up to the height of a man round about the cities. And he caused that upon those works of timbers there should be a frame of pickets built upon the timbers round about, and they were strong and high. He caused towers to be erected that overlooked those works of pickets. And he caused places of security to be built upon those towers, that the stones and the arrows of the Lamanites could not hurt them. And they were prepared that they could cast stones from the top thereof according to their pleasure and their strength, and slay him who should attempt to approach near the walls of the city. Thus Moroni did prepare strongholds against the coming of their enemies round about every city in all the land. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his armies should go forth into the east wilderness, Yea, and they went forth and drove all the Lamanites who were in the east wilderness into their own lands which were south of the land of Zarahemla. And the land of Nephi did run in a straight course from the east sea to the west. And it came to pass that when Moroni had driven all the Lamanites out of the east wilderness which was north of the lands of their own possessions, 
He caused that the inhabitants who were in the land of Zarahemla and in the land round about should go forth into the east wilderness, even to the borders by the seashore, and possess the land. And he also placed armies on the south in the borders of their possessions, and caused them to erect fortifications that they might secure their armies and their people from the hands of their enemies. And thus he cut off all the strongholds of the Lamanites in the east wilderness, yea, and also on the west, fortifying the line between the Nephites and the Lamanites, between the land of Zarahemla and the land of Nephi, from the west sea running by the head of the river Sidon, the Nephites possessing all the land northward, yea, even all the land which was northward of the land bountiful, according to their pleasure. Thus Moroni, with his armies, which did increase daily because of the assurance of protection which his works did bring forth unto them, did seek to cut off the strength and the power of the Lamanites from off the lands of their possessions, that they should have no power upon the lands of their possession. And it came to pass that the Nephites began the foundation of a city, and they called the name of the city Moroni, and it was by the East Sea, and it was on the south by the line of the possessions of the Lamanites. And they also began a foundation for a city between the city of Moroni and the city of Aaron, joining the borders of Aaron and Moroni. And they called the name of the city or the land Nephihah. And they also began in that same year to build many cities on the north, one in a particular manner which they called Lehi, which was in the north by the borders of the seashore, and thus ended the twentieth year. And in these prosperous circumstances were the people of Nephi in the commencement of the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And they did prosper exceedingly, and they became exceedingly rich, yea, and they did multiply and wax strong in the land. And thus we see how merciful and just are all the dealings of the Lord to the fulfilling of all his words unto the children of men. Yea, we can behold that his words are verified even at this time which he spake unto Lehi, saying, Blessed art thou and thy children, and they shall be blessed, inasmuch as they shall keep my commandments, they shall prosper in the land. But remember, inasmuch as they will not keep my commandments, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And we see that these promises have been verified to the people of Nephi. For it has been their quarrelings and their contentions, yea, their murderings and their plunderings, their idolatry, their whoredoms and their abominations which were among themselves, which brought upon them their wars and their destructions. And those who were faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord were delivered at all times, whilst thousands of their wicked brethren have been consigned to bondage, or to perish by the sword, or to dwindle in unbelief and mingle with the Lamanites. But behold, there never was a happier time among the people of Nephi since the days of Nephi than in the days of Moroni, yea, even at this time, in the twenty and first year of the reign of the judges. And it came to pass that the twenty and second year of the reign of the judges also ended in peace, yea, and also the twenty and third year. And it came to pass that in the commencement of the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges, there would also have been peace among the people of Nephi, had it not been for a contention which took place among them concerning the land of Lehi and the land of Morianton, which joined upon the borders of Lehi, both of which were on the borders by the seashore. For behold, the people who possessed the land of Morianton did claim a part of the land of Lehi. Therefore there began to be a warm contention between them, insomuch that the people of Morianton took up arms against their brethren, and they were determined by the sword to slay them. But behold, the people who possessed the land of Lehi fled to the camp of Moroni, and appealed unto him for assistance, for behold, they were not in the wrong. It came to pass that when the people of Morianton, who were led by a man whose name was Morianton, found that the people of Lehi had fled to the camp of Moroni, they were exceedingly fearful, lest the army of Moroni should come upon them and destroy them. Therefore Morianton put it into their hearts, that they should flee to the land which was northward, which was covered with large bodies of water, and take possession of the land which was northward. And behold, they would have carried this plan into effect, which would have been a cause to have been lamented. But behold, Morianton, being a man of much passion, therefore he was angry with one of his maidservants, and he fell upon her and beat her much. And it came to pass that she fled, and came over to the camp of Moroni, and told Moroni all things concerning the matter, and also concerning their intentions to flee into the land northward. 
Now behold, the people who were in the land Bountiful, or rather Moroni, feared that they would hearken to the words of Morianton and unite with his people, and thus he would obtain possession of those parts of the land which would lay a foundation for serious consequences among the people of Nephi, yea, which consequences would lead to the overthrow of their liberty. Therefore Moroni sent an army with their camp to head the people of Morianton to stop their flight into the land northward. And it came to pass that they did not head them until they had come to the borders of the land Desolation, and there they did head them by the narrow pass which led by the sea into the land northward, yea, by the sea on the west and on the east. And it came to pass that the army which was sent by Moroni, which was led by a man whose name was Teancum, did meet the people of Morianton. And so stubborn were the people of Morianton, being inspired by his wickedness and his flattering words, that a battle commenced between them, in the which Teancum did slay Morianton and defeat his army, and took them prisoners and returned to the camp of Moroni. And thus ended the twenty and fourth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus were the people of Morianton brought back. And upon their covenanting to keep the peace, they were restored to the land of Morianton, and a union took place between them and the people of Lehi, and they were also restored to their lands. And it came to pass that in the same year that the people of Nephi had peace restored unto them, that Nephiha, the second chief judge, died, having filled the judgment seat with perfect uprightness before God. Nevertheless, he had refused Alma to take possession of those records and those things which were esteemed by Alma and his fathers to be most sacred. Therefore Alma had conferred them upon his son Helaman. Behold, it came to pass that the son of Nephiha was appointed to fill the judgment seat in the stead of his father. Yea, he was appointed chief judge and governor over the people, with an oath and sacred ordinance to judge righteously, and to keep the peace and the freedom of the people, and to grant unto them their sacred privileges to worship the Lord their God, yea, to support and maintain the cause of God all his days, and to bring the wicked to justice according to their crime. Now behold, his name was Pahoran, and Pahoran did fill the seat of his father, and did commence his reign in the end of the twenty and fourth year over the people of Nephi. Okay, well, uh, here we have a lot of things you think, well, okay, this is kind of boring history, especially kids don't understand it. But, in, but when you understand our awful situation today and see how a lot of this applies to what we're going through today, it comes alive. It's very, very important we see in verse 21 for example it says that we see that these promises have been verified to the people of nephi for it had been it had been their quarrelings and their contentions yea their murderings and their plunderings their idolatry their whoredoms and their abominations which were among themselves which had brought upon them their wars and destructions see and that's exactly what we were talking about yesterday the judgments of god you can see them on all sides we were talking about one aspect of it yesterday but it all comes back to this uh promise of the lord blessed art thou uh, the promise made to lehi by the by the lord in verse 20 blessed art thou and thy children and they shall be blessed inasmuch as they shall keep my commandments they shall prosper in the land but remember, inasmuch as they will not keep my commandments, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. So given that, we see through the Book of Mormon how that came to pass. And, it was, and it's applied to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were brought here many centuries later. Fifteen centuries later, we find ourselves, but we're in the same situation where the promise is, is if we keep the commandments, we'll prosper in the land. But if we don't, we're uh, going to be cut off from the presence of the Lord in his own due time when we're fully ripe in iniquity. Now, these things uh, happen in the Book of Mormon in a really short time period in a condensed frame. And it brings up a lot of problems for the Latter-day Saints who do not have a witness of God that this is of God because it talks about the if you think of a, of the land of zion we've got the atlantic ocean and the pacific ocean and there's no way that this scene could take place uh as uh, as described between those two seas east and west sea if those were the case 
uh, that they were the East and West Sea that they're talking about, because if that's the case, then, uh, you know, they would be spread out over what is it? 3000 miles, more than 3000 miles. There's, there's no way that's going to happen given the, uh, description of events that take place. So people, uh, Latter-day Saints began to, uh, and I think it started with Parley P. Pratt, I don't know, but early on, they, uh, looking at the map, they see that the narrow neck of land between the Pacific Ocean and the, and the uh, Atlantic Ocean is down there by uh, uh, Panama, where we, you know, in the, in the Latin America, so what they call Mesoamerica now, and uh, some of them have contended that it, that uh, Lehi had landed on the shores of Peru, what we call present-day Peru, Peru, you know, and, and then they made their way up to the uh, land there where the narrow neck of land is. But it turns out that that land is very, very rough. And uh, there are not the, the kind of animals. It's not cultivatable very well. Uh, it really is really a lot of problems, even though we see the um, ruins of people uh, from ancient American ruins there. And uh, now I've been able to uh, see that there were like three civilizations, the Mayans and the, and the Aztecs and the Incas in that area. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of things that don't um, uh, coincide with the narration like this one that we're seeing in the Book of Mormon. So there's so there's this division and people some people believe no it was up here by the Great Lakes and what they were calling seas were you know you would think they were seas because they're so huge I mean you know they couldn't see them from the air like we can they can't see them from space like we can so uh, for them they were seas and uh, maybe it all took place up there so there are those who are trying to uh, establish that fact and. And uh, it's called the heartland theory. And they have a lot of things going for them, including the fact that all the animals that these people would have needed to keep the law of Moses is are all here. And we're here in this, what they, what the inhabitants, ancient inhabitants called the broad land. So this is the broad land, but it doesn't fit this description unless you talk about the narrow neck of land being there among the Great Lakes. So it's very possible that that was so, but uh, you know we're not going to get into that. Uh, the The main point is is not the geography that that uh, that uh, is correct, but the fact that it is a, becomes a stumbling block. I just read or not read. I just heard, watched a program last night where a caller called in, and uh, he was a Polynesian and he was announcing how he and his wife and their eight children and three grandchildren have all resigned from the from the LDS church. And boy, were they happy about that. And they were talking about coming uh, here to uh, uh, Salt Lake City in December. And, uh, and they were looking forward, you know, to uh, starting their new life as former Mormons. So these things become important because a lot of the enemies of, the, of Zion use them as leverage in order to uh, convince people of, uh, of the uh, uh, fraud, really, of Joseph Smith. That's what it would come down to if all of this stuff were made up and there are no geographical, there's no geographical correspondence to uh the book of mormon narrative the things that are in the book of mormon then uh, they can use that to convince people that joseph smith was lying that this was not a translation then they go to all the other things that they go to and of course the the principles uh of uh polygamy and and whatnot which the church has just addressed and the book of abraham which the church addressed here earlier and uh, so on, but they kind of have 
uh, the people as they see it, the people of the Latter-day Saints on the ropes as far as trying to defend their beliefs by uh, uh, appeal to the precepts of men, appeal to archaeology, DNA proof, uh, geology, uh, geography. They're trying to do all of the, use all of these to bring to bear on the Latter-day Saints to try to convince them that Joseph Smith was not a prophet, that he was a scoundrel, and that uh, the Book of Mormon is, it was not a genuine translation by the power and gift of God, but rather a fraud perpetrated upon these uh, poor dupes, uh, the Latter-day Saints, uh, by Joseph Smith. Of course, the problem with that is that uh, there is no way uh, to convince somebody who has been convinced by God by uh, and put their trust in the revelation that they have from God that this is true uh, 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 by uh, quoting uh, the studies of men or the findings of men. We, Especially when we have in the Book of Mormon that the Lord said he would not reveal everything when Moroni started to reveal a, a lot not this Captain Moroni that we're reading about, but a Moroni that lived, lived at the end of the time of the people and put all this stuff together with his father. But uh, uh, he told him, and I, I think maybe it was Nephi that was about to write things that the Lord forbid him to write them because he said he would try hit the faith of his people. And that's what's happening. The, their faith is being tried. Uh, but anyway, we're kind of getting off on that. Let's uh, continue now with uh, our next feature, uh, which is our situation update. Now, again, the people uh, who may be watching for the first time may need to know what this means. It uh, refers to our awful situation which uh, we find ourselves in these days in America. The Lord said and explained why the ancient civilizations of the Nephites and the, and the prior civilization for, of them that were here, according to the voices from the dust, uh, uh, the Jaredites, they, uh, why they were all destroyed. Both of those prior civilizations were destroyed by secret combinations that had come am among them uh, or we might uh, call it conspiracies that came uh, among them in in their day. And so we are warned that they will be in, our, in place in our day. And in the Book of Mormon, we read about it, and, and it's explained that it's a, founded by the devil, and it, and it enables men to, well, women too, but people to enter into these secret combinations and then that gives them power to get gain and get whatever they want they can have because they uphold one another. The judges don't, uh, that are part of that secret combination, don't uh, try, don't uh, convict them. Uh, they find ways to to get around the laws, and they, and so law is the the rule of law and order and especially of our constitution is broken down by these people they don't want law because they live by their uh by the rules of this secret society and uh, and the lord says that we must wake up when we see it come among us that we must awaken to a sense of our awful situation and uh, because of it, and because if we don't and we suffer it to get above us, then then the d destruction comes upon us. And uh, it looks like we haven't stopped it. At least there are many people who see it and they're awake to our awful situation, but uh, they have not uh, enab been enabled to, uh, of course, overcome it. And the only way that we can uh, do anything that would uh, be uh, important for us, or I mean effective for us, in stopping them is uh, through the, the Lord. So what's required is for us to repent and, and uh, be baptized and, 
and then the Lord said he would number us with his people, and he then will establish Zion among them, and he fights the battles of Zion. So that's how, almost like getting on the Ark of Noah, becoming identified with the Lord's people, uh, that he is going to bear his arm, of the arm of his power in defending is the way to go. But of course, we can't get that message out fast enough there's a lot of people, as we're going to see, that fight against that message, too. All right, well, so here are uh, some of the videos that we have on here uh, that you can see. If you go to our uh, video or our uh, awful situation update on our website, and uh, you can see uh, some of them don't bring up the... the uh, um, thumbnails properly but that shouldn't stop you i don't we still don't know why that's happening here's an important one the chechen president says the isis leader is a cia agent now that comes to no surprise and then we have the fed in the panic mode according to paul craig roberts there's lots of them there to watch and then you can go to our in-depth uh uh background briefing videos it's the same thing it's a slideshow there and uh, but it uh, has feature length videos to explain the background for what is happening so we encourage you to go there and do that now today we're going to play a clip here that i don't think i've loaded it on there yet but uh, it has to do with uh with uh, uh, probably uh, our greatest threat here in america as it's uh, starting to take shape so i'm going to play it uh, as I have explained before, it's necessary for me to play videos in two parts here. Uh, the, uh, one part is the uh, video part on one computer playing the video. The other is the audio, and then I have to try to synchronize them together because uh, the audio won't come through from the video properly. So here we are. We're going to be talking about uh, the uh, uh, Muslim threat, as we've seen for many uh, months now, and we've talked about it, how uh, awful it is uh, that uh, the Lord has spoken out against the New World Order and Edumea, the Reds, if you will, which we've explained how that comes to be. But uh, anyway, they... Uh, because they are plotting to take over this country. They envision this. They have plans to do it. They have appointed it, this land, unto themselves, the Lord says, with all the joy of their heart. And uh, we see it not just in this land, but in, in uh, Europe as well, where the Muslims are, uh, you know, according to their plan, and we've seen how their plan was uncovered, and how you know their tactics work and so on so um, a lot of people see this and what we're trying to say is it's part of that that uh, awful uh situation that we're in and that the really the only hope that we have to fight against it is as captain moroni did and the nephites in general that we see in the book of mormon have done by calling upon the lord by calling upon their prophets so that's because the lord god fights the battles of israel uh, if they believe in him um so let's uh, let's start that now and uh, i'm going there's some foul language i'm going to try to turn down the audio when we get to that part <laughs>
Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've talked about this jihad gene in some people where there's vitriol and hatred. And uh, we're going we're gonna to try. Hey, guys, can we find the, the, uh, the young guy that videoed the situation with that guy? Yeah, we'll work if, on it, Tom. If, if you can get him, I'm sure we can. We'll get him later on in the show. We will interview him live regarding what you just saw in Atlanta, Georgia, just a couple of days ago. But as we said, this is going to start taking place all over the world, all over the United States. Get ready, folks. We've got a lot of us. So uh, that's true. You know, we first saw it in Detroit. It was really bad where those guys were trying to to, uh, they were actually out there, some pastors were out, out there counter-protesting the Muslims that were demonstrating in Detroit. And man, they were assaulted. And the cops wouldn't come to their aid at all. The cops really uh, were afraid, I think, of the Muslims themselves. But now we see it in Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, this guy just comes over and these people weren't pro counter-protesting. They were simply filming the what the muslims were doing and it's, it was really uh out of line totally but indicative of their attitude they they've appointed this land to themselves and when they are in power they don't hesitate to uh, uh manifest that their sharia law says that you are guilty if you believe anything but allah and muhammad is prophet so Anyway, that was a very interesting uh, uh, indication of the, our situation there. And we're going to play some more videos here uh, that uh, tie into that. I, uh, this one um, is showing uh, what is going on there in, uh, in Europe. And uh, I don't remember if there's any English subtitles to this or not. But... Uh, this one is, uh, I, I don't remember what city. You'll probably be able to tell here in a minute. And it's getting pretty bad over there. If we had time, we could go through it. Uh, but uh, there is a uh, a um, woman, uh, a, a video that uh, I wanted to play. I found it the last minute because of uh, of uh, the fact that it's the same thing going on in Italy, where they're pr uh, protesting the Muslims there and the caliphate as a whole, but it took place in the plaza where my wife and I uh, spent uh, a few hours when we were visiting over there. So it was very interesting. So let's take, it has some English subtitles to tell us what's going on. So let's, uh, let's, and I forgot to share the other one there <laughs> after bringing it up, but uh, let me get this one going and then I will share it. And uh, well, there it is. It's being shared. Okay. And uh, then we'll play the audio.
Buonasera, buonasera Milano, buonasera Matteo, buonasera a tutti, buonasera a tutte le donne che sono qui presenti, un applauso a tutte le donne, dai, più forte le donne, alziamo la voce, contro il califfata, contro l'estremismo che avanza, contro tutte quelle moschee fadette che hanno segregato tutte le donne e vogliono segregare tutte le donne italiane. Basta, basta con quel velo. a quelle donne che hanno portato nel nostro paese solo drammi, infubulazione, estremismo che avanza e lo dico al sindaco di Milano che vuole costruire altra moschea I would read it and turn the audio down there and so I could read the subtitles for those of you that are just listening but you'll have to actually go to the video to, to read the subtitles because if I turn the audio, audio down it all also turns my mic down so that didn't work but anyway here she is if you watch it on video you can see the English subtitles Dobbiamo! Donne, fischiate anche voi contro questo, con questa avanzata di califfato, contro l'estri che ha massacrato l'Italia, che abbiamo abbassato la testa. Oggi alziamo questa testa. Matteo, insieme a Matteo, alziamo questa testa contro questo califfato contro questo estremismo nelle moschee fai da te che ormai sono un cancro per la civiltà per tutta la civiltà Brava. qualcuno ci chiama rassisti ce ne facciamo una ragione Smettiamola con quel buonismo. Tutte le immigrate che arrivano, centinaia di giovani italiani che sono andati all'estero a lavare i piatti. Matteo, questi ragazzi devono tornare in Italia e rimpiazzare tutti quegli immigrati che hanno fatto entrare senza diritto. Smettiamola, Pisapia, se deve vergognare. Ancora più forte, più forte, bravo Salvini. Citrocento se dicono che non ci sono estremisti, non ci sono terroristi, stranamente sono andati tutti in Siria a combattere, da qui partiti, da Milano, vergogna, continuiamo a dire donne, non metteremo mai quel velo che non ha nulla a che vedere con la libertà, mettono loro, Torna a fare l'estremismo, torna a casa. Chi è integralista e terrorista deve tornare a casa a calci. Sì. Non lo posso dire, sono una donna. Donne, dobbiamo salvare. Ogni... Dietro ogni donna ci sono tanti bambini.
uomini, donne, uomini e tutti gli uomini e donne vogliamo salvare questo paese da questa avanzata insieme Europa io sono per salvare questo paese anche con la Russia insieme alla Russia che hanno voluto mettere a parte loro sì sanno estremismo solo insieme a loro ce l'ha e la dobbiamo tutti quanti basta il silenzio basta l'omertà basta dobbiamo la testa tutti quanti alziamo la testa e diciamo no, no all'estremismo no al burka in Italia non al velo in Italia No, noi non ci siamo ai ricchi, se devono vergognare loro a nascondere quella crate segregate. E ieri ho visto qualcuno a girare in qualche moschea, sapete di chi parlo. Non è mai andata nei centri di accoglienza dove le furono, non è mai venuta nei loro funerali donne straniere si fanno belle e si mettono pure il velo si sottomettono alle moschee fai da te io dico grazie Milano stasera di aver dato questa possibilità di parlare a alta voce contro un estremismo e per la libertà grazie grazie Matteo grazie Uh, you think of, uh, of demonstrations uh, here, but no, people are afraid, I guess. They don't speak out. Uh, they're afraid because they're accused of hate speech. And, uh, and as a result, uh, it just continues to grow here. They speak out against us instead of the other way around. Uh, uh, when uh, Jerry Boinkin uh, was to speak on the 17th of October, uh, the Muslims, uh, he was going to speak at the prayer breakfast there in Washington, D.C., and the Muslims mounted a campaign and tried to stop him. They didn't manage to do it. They had before, but in this case, they didn't succeed. And uh, pretty much his message is one of Christianity. So we need to understand their opposition and their tactics and so on. Uh, even though if you try to uh, uh, join in in this, you're going to be accused of hate speech. Well, um, now, uh, the, there's not just that aspect of what's happening. It's difficult to understand exactly unless you take it from a point of view of sin and the Lord's uh, message of why he uh, deposes nations and why he, his judgment comes upon them and it's because of their sins, then you can't really understand what's happening because you get angry like she was at uh, these uh, impositions on our freedom. But if your freedom is the freedom to sin, then you're going to find these things, just as the Nephites found that when they forgot their God, then the Lamanites were in the wings coming after them. And that's exactly what we see here, only it's not Lamanites. It's uh, the Gentiles can, uh, you know, have forgotten their God in a large measure. We've talked about that in a lot of ways. And they've rejected the fullness of the gospel, uh, and uh, as a result, we see these enemies coming upon uh, the American people or the Gentiles in general, Europe and, and America. And it's in the form of the government, the New World Order. And uh, they are using the Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamic religion, if you will, to uh, form or to take over the the United States and uh, the rest of Western civilization and to dominate the people as part of their full spectrum dominance. But 
but here what's important to understand is is because they're doing it just like they use the racist term with the uh when they, when they put barack obama in there and he can get away with all these things because as soon as people speak out they're accused of racism as you saw that was try they try that as well in the film the lady kept talking about there in milan in the plaza she was speaking about don't call us racist we didn't have anything to do with racism well we're you know and so they see really what is happening in terms of uh, an invasion you saw that they put it on the pulpit where she was speaking this is an invasion to take away their liberty is what she was saying and it needs to be recognized as that and unless you recognize that your very liberty is being taken away and once it's gone you are nothing in their uh hands you your wives will are raped your your uh your lands are taken away uh everything that uh you especially your religion to be able to um uh, uh, uh worship god as you uh would like or as you uh see fit which people have had in, under the constitution is being taken away from them and so everything you could think of that is horrible is going to happen if the if these people get above us and the lord says do not allow them do not suffer them he says to get above you so we've got to take action here and people are paralyzed but the first thing they've got to do is understand that it's a real threat that exists now here this next clip is a little change of pace because it's uh it has to do with uh, uh, yeah it has to do it's an older one but it has to do now with another aspects an aspect of this not only are we being invaded by Muslims uh, intent on taking over this country and that's according to their own plan and we can read it in their own literature there's no problem uh, with accessing those documents and and uh it's very clear from their actions that that's the intent it's a cultural invasion a religious invasion we could say but there's also then a military invasion and we talked about in section 87 how important it was to understand when the lord said after many days that uh, the slaves would rise up against their masters who would be marshaled for war and disciplined for war and the remnant also would be marshaled and they would rise up and vex the gentiles with the sore vexation that is the major development that we uh, will see happening as a result of these people invading this land they think that they're going to take it over they've appointed it to unto themselves into their own possession the lord says uh uh with the full uh, with uh all the joy of their heart because yeah who wouldn't this is quite a spoil right to take this land so we're going to see now in this next clip this is an older one it's from 2009 but uh, what is what they're talking about here not only took place then but it has taken place in spades afterwards talking about it it caused quite a stir uh, back in 2009 but it's important to understand that uh it's not over so let's watch that and uh sorry uh it's taking a little while for it to come up here Come on. All right, I don't know what happened. Uh, let me try over again. We're here in Southern California at the Long Beach Naval Weapons Shipyard, one of the only deep water ports in America that our military controls actually only one of three and it's the only one on the western side of the united states controlling the pacific 
The Clinton administration decided to shut it down in 1993. And now he's letting his good buddies, the military industrial complex of China under Costco, the military industrial shipping firm that is responsible for bringing in slave goods and some evidence shows mafia influences into our country. This is a major national security breach. We must do something and do something now. Only the local people, a judge here in town, have the will to stand up against this tyranny. And what is the tyranny? There are over 30 million political dissidents in Chinese slave labor camps in the mainland of China. This has been widely reported. Why then would we allow Costco, which is controlled by the bloodthirsty leadership of China, to have our only deep water port right in the heart of our western coastline. And something that, something that we really see no reason for is the fact that we have been denied access to this facility, even though it is in the process of being closed down. We're not allowed to show you the extensive shipping facilities, cranes, docks, and indoor facilities working on large ships that China military shipping concern Costco is going to get. We talked to Ernie McBride, Naval Intelligence here, and he told us that we'd have to call the Navy and get permission to get in. Well, I did that three weeks ago and never heard back from them, even though I called the Navy about 15 times. So that your government which pretty much at the top level is selling out, thinks there's no problem with the communist Chinese that treat their people like slaves are gaining our strategic military bases and ports all, all over this country. On the ground that are actually in the military and are guarding and protecting this place, they think it's terrible because they've got some common sense because they haven't been paid off like your president has. Again, we have been denied access to this facility. Why is there this obsession in our federal government with weakening our Constitution? Why do these lackeys from Harvard and Yale dislike America so much and are so willing to weaken America so their friends in Europe can control the world? That's what it's all about. This is about weakening America so that the Eastern establishment, which is allied with the European empire, can continue to flourish. This is real politics, not what you're taught by the mainstream media, which are nothing but propaganda bureaus of the corrupt establishment. You, you I'll get in trouble if I talk anything. Really? I know, that's understandable. They tell us not to say anything. They do? Yeah. So you're not supposed to talk about how the Chinese are fighting tooth and nail to get our only deep water port on the western side of the United States? We well, thank you for at least being a patriot and saying that you don't like it. Thanks a lot. Side the base across the small bay, but it's still hard for you to understand and for us to understand the enormity of this port complex and shipyards that's just being handed over again to the communist dictatorship in China. Take a look. Endless. As far as the eye could see, with conning towers and, and deep water ports and shipyards and big oil tank facilities for refueling, they've got it all. Ports are power. Wars have been fought over ports, and we're just giving them to them. It's insane. It's not really insanity. It's sold out. Our politics, they've been taught the international language. Sell your country out. I'll assure you China and Germany and, and Japan and England aren't selling out their ports, their shipyards. This is very dangerous. This is a strategic point in the United States of America. So uh, that was, like I said, way back, you saw the date on there, 1997. And uh, things have gone uh, from bad to worse since then. They've got uh, lots of things uh, that where they have, um, uh, they, they call them ports, that they're port of entries, but they're inland in the Chinese. They're like industrial parks right here in Utah and in Idaho. So... 
they are dividing up the spoils, so to speak. You know, we're in huge debt to the Chinese, and so they are even they're even shipping the water, uh, the fresh water of the of the uh, Great Lakes. They're taking and draining the Great Lakes and taking it to China. It's unbelievable. But here we don't say much about it, right? And then um, let's uh, let's watch this one. Uh, it's a little more up to date. Uh, in fact, I think it's uh, this month. Hello, uh, if it's I'm not mistaken. But Susan Duclos here is explaining uh, the presence of Russian 17, troops. In our 14. Just received mail from a reader, a Before It's News reader. And the subject line is military helicopters in northwest Montana. The email starts, I was reading stories on beforeitsnews.com and I heard helicopters flying over my house. I live by the city airport in Kalispell, Montana, so those noises don't normally bother me, but I knew they were military before I saw them. I grabbed my cell phone and ran outside, and sure enough, they were. They were following each other. First helicopter was what looked like a CH-47 Chinook or a CH-46 Sea Knight. The second helicopter, shown in the picture I just changed over to, was definitely an Apache. This is the third time this year I have seen military aircraft in the area. He proved I think we still live in a free and wonderful country. Come together, USA. Now we followed up for permission to use the pictures, and the reader gave permission, but added another little tidbit that's odd. My friend has a family member who's been out fishing, and while fishing, he ran into some Russians that offered him money for the fish that he caught. Now, if you'll remember in, well, anybody who has been reading these stories and keeping up with this, in March of 2014, there was another reader email, and they warned that Russian troops are everywhere. You can see by the story that before its news received following email from a retired American military officer who has agreed to identify himself as F.C. Hawkins. We published this email in full. According to S.F.C. Hawkins, he served in the Army from 97 to 01. After he got out of the Army, he had a meeting in the Pentagon after which he became a civilian military, traveling to different states, training defense contractors for the next several years. With a top secret security clearance, he put two and two together to realize what he was really training these contractors for, so he decided he no longer wanted to be part of their crazy plans. He has since moved out to Montana, where he met plenty of other veterans and Americans who are wide awake and prepared to disgrace the nation once again. Now, I'll go ahead and put a link to this in the, with the video. Same day, another piece written in D.C. to protect it or take it. And what this uh, showed, there was a quote from Steve Coyle because these came from his alerts. It said, we will witness the greatest Trojan troop takedown and quadruple cross in history. Our former allies, who once held the U.S. in high esteem, will turn on us in disgust as one after another we abandon them. Abaddon, the destroyer, and his followers have done their job well. Now comes war and hell. Now, there were multiple alerts there, talking about Russian soldiers, perhaps Spetsnaz, in and around the and they have people wondering what their orders are, whether with the tensions as high as they are between the U.S. and Russia, whether those orders could become battle plans against the U.S. at the snap of Putin's fingers. Um, I'll go ahead and I will link these three alerts also. All of this is connected. So the question now is, what, are the mili what is the military up to? And what are Russians doing in Montana? Have a good day. Okay, so uh, what are Russians? Do? What are Russians doing in, in Ohio? The hawk is uh, talked about that for, has talked about that for a long time. When s we see him coming in on C one thirties, as he's talked about uh, uh, quite a bit, and then I've run into him here in Utah, 
And, uh, it, you know, uh, it's not easy to tell what their purpose is, but uh, it's uh, really, uh, given some of the things that the government has done, uh, we see this traitorous action going on. And, and again, it fits the scriptures. They have, you know, cast it out with the spiteful minds, cast out the land of the Lord. That's why he's spoken against them in the fire of his jealousy. Uh, let's uh, go on now to uh, the next one uh, here with uh, Russian troops on American soil. And uh, there are so many we could play, but this is, this is uh, uh, one of, of uh, one of them I was able to find very quickly. So. On June 25, 2013, in Washington, D.C., the Russian emergency situation, Russia's equivalent to FEMA, signed an agreement with FEMA to, quote, exchange experts during joint rescue operations in major... This, according to the Russian Ministry for Civil Defense website. The Civil Defense website, however, goes on to discuss something that appears to be much more sinister. Russian so-called experts will be engaged in, quote, monitoring and forecasting emergency situations, training of rescuers, development of mine rescuing, and provision of security at mass events. This last line, that of providing security at mass events, has many people worried. We are talking about events like the Super Bowl, the Boston Marathon, and so on. Consider this, Russia, a country that is in effect our enemy, of which the NSA, Edward Snowden controversy, has exemplified, could next year be providing security at the Boston Marathon. We must the marathon terrorists, Jakar and Tamerlan Zarnayev, were Chechens with close ties to the Russians. After the Boston Marathon bombing, Having the Russians take part in security would be like the fox guarding the hen house. This is, in effect, colluding with the enemy. Where will it end? If Russia will be providing security at so-called mass events, why not at smaller events? A high school prom, a local farmer's market, perhaps even a private... Will there be any event safe from Russian security forces? And what about the so-called major disasters, the main function of these so-called experts? What will constitute a major disaster? We know during Hurricane Katrina, the local police were confiscating guns. New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin famously uttered these chilling words. No one will be able to be armed. We will take all weapons. Only law enforcement will be allowed to have guns. Guns were illegally confiscated, countermanding the Second Amendment. Here, New Orleans confiscated weapons. We can easily see if Russian experts were brought in during a disaster, we would have Russian so-called security forces. Let's call them what they really are, confiscating guns from American citizens. Let us also remember that after the Boston Marathon terrorist attack, de facto martial law was declared in the Watertown and surrounding areas. Looking for the unarmed teenager, Jakar Sanev, hundreds of militarized police conducted illegal house-to-house -house searches. Citizens were taken into custody without being charged with a crime. If a de facto or declared martial law took place, would these Russian soldiers be alongside our militarized police? Would there come a time when the Russian soldiers were actually the ones in charge during the martial law? What is our own government, the rogue administration of Barack Hussein Obama doing? Most would call this colluding with the enemy. Most would call this treason. Obama has gone beyond trampling on the Constitution and has become an enemy of the state, a traitor.
course, the biggest problem is that it's not a bomb. I could very well be a puppet. You know, anybody that gets put in there, that's the way they play the game. You get the, they're the puppet tears behind the puppet so people are shooting at the puppet you know they're blaming they're blaming obama but it's not obama it, they're just he's just their lackey that gets put in there and and uh, we got to get people to probably you know to understand that better and one of the people who was doing a, a real stand-up job uh, alerting the people to what was actually what is actually happening uh, it was a man by the name of James Trafficant, and they framed him and put him in jail. And uh, he got out of jail finally. And and uh, uh, but here, just last month, they killed him. So let's watch that. This is a good ask. This is going to be a little harder to uh, transfer. I mean, to see if we are changed at Oregon, I just found out someone that I know has passed away. His name was James, a trafficant. He died at the age of 73. And six months ago, this is what he told me. I had to be careful. Say, they've already they've taken away your name. Be careful you don't get too much in the public eye again because they'll kill you. Now, as of right now, we don't know know a lot of the details of exactly what happened to James. We do know that on Tuesday he was driving a tractor and according to his aide, he got a heart attack, crashed the tractor, causing it to flip with him inside of it. He was rushed to the hospital where he passed away today, September 27th, 2014. As of right now, the traffic camp family is mourning the death of James and they have not released any details about his death. And I wish to respect those wishes and not to spread any conspiracy theories, rumors, or assumptions online like other people are right now. But in this video, I want to pay tribute to really an outstanding, amazing life that James lived. James A. Trafficant was well known for being the little guy who was able to stand up against big government. He blue collar guy who was never afraid to be himself and to speak honestly from the heart. As a sheriff in jail after refusing to homes after from the city's dying steel industry. Ed O'Neill was even making a documentary about him and is still currently finalizing it. In 1980, he was charged with taking bribes from the mafia, but representing himself, he was successfully able to convince the jury he was doing a one-man sting and was found not guilty. He then went on to become a congressman from Pennsylvania. Democrat, he said many times, and he even told Janet Reno that she should be the governor of Beijing. In 2001, he was charged and convicted for bribery, not paying taxes, and corruption charges. He was expelled from the U.S. House of Representatives in a unanimous vote except for Ron Paul to banish him from Congress. James always made the case that he was politically prosecuted for being outspoken and standing against the government. And looking at today's political landscape, I think he was right. I mean, we have Timothy Geithner, who didn't pay taxes. He never went to jail for that. The head of Monsanto is now the head of the FDA. Now you could see clear corruption, clear bribery, clear tax evasion by the Obama administration. And yet again, no one gets held accountable and sent to maximum security jail, not a country club jail where they have golf courses and tennis courts and all this other crap. No, James Trafficant was sent to jail and he faced the full sentence that he was served. And even when he was in jail, he decided to run for Congress and got 15% of the vote. The man was in jail and people still decided to vote for him. He was an amazing charism. The latest thing that James was working on was called Project Freedom. It was a plan, a bill, kind of a proposal to get rid of the IRS and the US Federal Reserve System. You can check out the plan because the link is in the description below. He told me about this six months ago when I was able to spend some Orlando, Florida. Being around James, he was always very spoke from the heart and never was afraid to tell you what he thought about you. It was truly an honor and pleasure to be able to spend some time with him. And he is survived by his wife and two daughters. I leave you, James speaking as eloquently as he always did. They create 169 new bureaucracies and agencies with all kind of positions and jobs. 
Just that one thing. Yeah. So they're creating government jobs. Like that one year, they had the big explosion of jobs. It showed a great re revival in America. It turned out that 400,000 of those jobs were partners. Yeah. The government, when it came to light, they were all embarrassed by it. Yeah. Look, you got to go the old-fashioned way. Government can't be hiring people. Government got to get... We don't need a Department of Energy, a Department of Education. We don't need an EPA. Congress has set standards. The states could operate within those standards and set up their programs. The states of America, not the central government of America. Let's not also forget that with Obamacare, the IRS has been increased more than ever throughout history than before. Well, even my bill would World eliminate the IRS, yeah. and even though I don't believe it was ever legally ratified, yeah. it would repeal finally and put the nails in the coffin in the 16th Amendment. Yeah. And it's time we do that. Sons, <laughs> very well Dead said. On. Okay, so now he's the late uh, James A. Trafficant, and uh, you know we could make a film like that. They probably should on Breitbart, who heart attack and all. Oh, it just goes on and on and on. The murders are unbelievable that are taking place. So we have the murders. We have the lying, we have the abominations, we have the hypocrisy uh, that we have talked about. And now, finally, uh, we're going to show one. And again, see, the whole idea of this is to understand that it's the, it's the only solution is for people to repent and to come unto the, the flee unto the Lord's mountain, right? That's what he says. And uh, if we'll flee unto his mountain, because he, he said that the, the wicked bend the bow and they place the string upon the arrow in order to shoot at the upright in heart, you know. So we can understand the the outrageous, out, the, uh, the in, um, I'm looking for a word here, the uh, infuriation, <laughs> outrageousness, that's not what I want. But uh, the indignation of uh, good people when they see this happening, when they start to wake up, they become indignant. They become aroused and everything. But unlike the days of Captain Moroni, there is not this real clear-cut enemy. But still, the point, the, the, the way that we survive is to understand that we can repent and then be numbered with the house of Israel and then call upon the Lord and the prophet of the Lord and ask him, okay, where do we go? What do we do? You know, and take up arms and defend ourselves and so on because the Lord says he will fight our battles. He will fight the battles of Zion. That's the important thing. So uh, that is uh, in spite of the fact, and the message is, in spite of the fact that they are carving up America, that they've appointed this land under themselves with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey, we should not fear but turn to the Lord God. And, of course, uh, that's a problem that because people fight against that and we need to show uh, why that happens. But uh, uh, the... Uh, I guess maybe tomorrow we'll be talking a little more about that on the prophets of Zion and uh, so that we can see why people fight against the restoration and various parts of the restoration are especially by Christians. That's the ironic part. It should be the Christians leading the way. But, of course, they're leading the way and opposing it. So... So I hope that irony can we can see that as we as we go along here. Now that last video showed some difficulty energy and, and vitality back in uh, in playing because it just keeps hesitating. We got a problem here with our computer not even wanting to play the videos that I download let alone on try to play over the internet. But um uh, and we'll continue on. Now, this next video is, uh, and let me share it here because I keep forgetting to do that. Uh, this video is uh, by Pete Santilli. This is uh, episode number 827 of the uh, Pete Santilli show, 
but it's a very long one and so i can't play it all or we go to our three hour we go over our three hour limit so i'm not going to do that we're we're just about to our normal hour and a half uh, limit we may go over that a little bit but the thing is with this one uh we're talking about the latest move and peace until Santel is bringing us the knowledge here of the uh, latest move regarding the Bundy Ranch. That's the, the thing that has come out. They're making their move to try to surround the Bundy Ranch. And I, I haven't had a chance to look into it all, but I thought this was very uh, informative if we could um, uh, hear Pete Santilli's take on it. So we're going to start uh, somewhere around, we can't play the whole thing, like I said. So I think around 30 something, 37, uh, and I won't be able to, uh, no way I'm gonna be able to uh, um, synchronize these, but uh, we'll do the best we can. We the people. On behalf of everyone, it's 3 million acres, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Let me get to this story. And by the way, you know, anyone associated with me, connected to me, want to come around me, doesn't matter um, uh, what you think. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say exactly what I'm saying because it's constitutional, it's lawful. Uh, I'm, I'm literally prepared uh, for, for future generations to make sure. that I stand in fight and I'm prepared to die in that spirit. I am, okay? Yes, my, my family members need to understand that. They need to understand what it means to be run over by a tyrannical government and what the alternative is. I would much rather die trying to fight for our freedom but than live a slave and allow my family members to live as a slave in the United States of America, okay? My God, wait till you hear. I'm gonna break down this Bundy Ranch story as, as, as soon as we come back, okay? Do not be afraid to speak out about this, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to rise up. Right now, this is the moment. This is it. Uh, let's uh, let's converge uh, at Bundy Ranch. Again, Bundy Ranch standoff number two. We will be giving you uh, coverage of this event. Uh, and, and that begins Right at uh, that coverage of Bundy Ranch standoff number two uh, begins right after this message. If you want to call in, speak of it, speak. It. Okay, now I'll try to get past the message here. They're, uh, they don't think they cut it out. Let me see. Okay, so about 40. To the death, I will stand and fight against anything that you try to do to silence what I just said to all of our listeners and the American people. There is no job or you're being too busy for you to get involved in standing and fighting in this thing. I, listen to me. I'm telling you this right now, okay? This Bundy Ranch incident, I, I'm calling upon every race, creed, color. You better get in tune and snap the hell out of the government-run, state-run propaganda outfit called the, called the media. They've been hijacked. Anybody tells you that Clive Bundy's a racist, you know what I say to you? I say, shut your cake hole and get out there and talk to Clive and Bundy, okay? Get out there and talk to them. You'll see that what the media's been telling you is completely different than what Clive and Bundy will say to you directly. He's not a racist. I'll stake my life on it. If anybody, anyone can provide me with one shred of proof, including the stuff that the media was putting out there about Clive and Bundy, about him being a racist. If you can provide me with one shred of truth that his words that were taken out of context 
to serve George Soros's media matters, if you can prove to me that his words were racist, I'll stake my life on this. There's nobody out there that can do that. There's no one that can argue anything outside of what you are parroting by the communist media outlets. Guerrilla Media Network is not a communist media outlet. And I'm going to say that I'm here to kill communism. Kill it. Dead. It will no longer have air to breathe in the propaganda circles. It will be killed. It will be sucked as long as this microphone is still working. Communist propaganda needs to die and die now. And I'm going to speak out with my First Amendment. Look at this. I've got my Oath Keeper material. Okay, my oath. I'm going to read this stuff to you. Okay? I swore an oath. I'm an Oath Keeper. I'm a Bundy Ranch supporter. And I'm here to tell you right now while I can say this. You better get ready to either stand and fight or die a freaking shackled slave. Because that's what you're about to become. You're about to become. If you do not stand up... Get up and fight for your rights right now. You will die a slave. And that doesn't apply to just black people. Look at how upset the black people are for slavery, which I'm absolutely opposed to. Okay? All these immigrants that they're bringing in through amnesty, slaves, you might as well put shackles on them. They have worker bees that are going to work for cheap. Just because they came from a country that didn't have any jobs. And the country was torn up by the drug trade that the CIA fabricated. Now they're being brought to the United States to become a bunch of worker bee slaves. We need to free these people that are coming from these countries under amnesty. Okay, the ones that the illegal immigrants that we have running around here, those are slaves. Slaves right now, do you understand me? You know what else they want to do? Listen to me. If you are an illegal immigrant and you're making money off the books and you're not paying your taxes, they're going to give you amnesty and they're going to put you on the books so they can tax you, you stupid ass. All right. Well, that's his rant. I, I wanted to get to the part where he actually explains what is happening with at, or at the Bundy Ranch here? Let me uh, let me see if I can uh, cue us up here to a point that uh, that talks about that. Let's see. Of ACECs in Southern Nevada. Now, after the Bundy Ranch standoff, the BLM is proposing an additional 1.8 million acres a 280% increase, all of which just happens to be in Southern Nevada. Anyone with a little bit Harry Reid, they are punishing their enemies, ladies and gentlemen. How is it that all newly proposed critical environmental land in the United States just happens to reside within miles of the Bundy Ranch? How is that? How could that be? And I can't believe I just missed this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? We're going to go to a break, and uh, we will be back uh, right after the top of the hour news break. Okay. The live Pete Santilli show. That'll be the last time that one is messed up there, Brett. Uh, again, I have n no, I do know. Yep, I do know how that happened. We're going to go to a break. But uh, the point is, is that uh, you can see his passion for this and where they the federal government are making their move there in nevada but of course they're making it in many other places so what uh this is like the point i'm trying to make is this is like the lamanites coming amalekai and the others they're coming against the nephites and the nephites having to, to defend their freedom but they couldn't defend their freedom this is the point that can't be missed if they were just to become as angry and as, uh, you know, disregarding of God, 
if uh, they are ones that have turned back from following the Lord, or they are ones who will not inquire of Him or seek Him, uh, then uh, it, it, you know they're going to go. They're going to be swept off the land. The key is they have to serve the God of the land, who is Jesus Christ, if they're going to survive what is coming. And I don't know if I made that clear enough today, uh, but uh, we've kind of taken a general uh, sur survey of some of the enemies of Zion and uh, seeing what is happening. We saw that what was happening yesterday with the Ebola thing, so I didn't include that, but there's so much. There's the police state. We didn't include much of that there or any of that, really. Uh, but, of course, we see the Muslim threat, Idumea, and we see the New World Order threat who are carving up the land and appointing it unto themselves. So the American people eventually are going to wake up and rise up against their masters, according to the prophecies of Joseph Smith, as we've seen. And they're even going to call upon other nations to defend themselves against these nations here that are on our, foreign nations that are on our soil, like Russia and China. And uh, so we'll see that come to pass, which will fulfill the scriptures. But uh, that's not a very exciting prospect to uh, to contemplate. And uh, but uh, you know we don't know exactly what to do about it ourselves, but we have to rely upon the Lord. And He said, "Repent and be baptized, and come and be numbered with My people, because I am going to bear My arm and gather them in. And this is the land that's consecrated for their gathering. And I'm going to show unto them that the Gentiles, that is the Clintons, the, the Bushes, the Obamas, uh, the whole political machine behind them." Uh, the New World Order, in other words, the global elite that have been exposed as those who are trying to uh, take down America by design in order to use its resources to take down other countries. And they've done that for years and years, and now they want to take down that because their, all, their overarching agenda is to reduce the population and they have to kill millions to do that. And so they have various means that they're employing to do that and getting ready for it and so on. And we've seen a lot of it. But they don't know that the Lord has spoken against them in the fire of his jealousy. So that's the important message. I hope it made sense. Have a good day. And as always, my prayer is that the Lord's choicest blessings will be with us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.